Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Jeremy Pettis. This is my good buddy, Dr. Steve Edelman. And we're here to tell you about our recent experience using the Medtronic 780G system. Steve wore it for several weeks. I'm actually still using it. We want to tell you all about our experiences, the pros and the cons. Um, so a little bit more about who we are first. So Steve, tell the folks who you are. Well, you know, Steve Edelman, um, I'm living with type one since 1970, you do the math. And uh, I work at UCSD in the VA, but also founded Taking Control of Your Diabetes in 1995 mm -hmm. to educate people about living a long and healthy life with diabetes. And I'm also an endocrinologist at work at University of California, San Diego. We were both diagnosed with type one when we were 15, just me a little few years later. Um, so we have a lot in common. All right, so let's get into our pros and cons. So starting with the pros, here's pro number one. Yeah, I think the best way to describe the 780G as we start off, it's a fully automated treat to target algorithm. And that has a lot of meaning in that sentence. However, we'll take you through some of the important settings. The treat to target is one of the most important things in this system. And you could lower the target to 100 milligrams per deciliter, but also 110, 120. And this is a very low target compared to other systems mm -hmm. out there. And it allows folks who want to be more aggressive uh, to be more aggressive and to have tighter blood sugars. Mm -hmm. And once you get on the system, you start it, and I think you have to be using it for about 48 hours, this smart guard technology kicks in. And once that happens, it's learning you. So the, the basal rates and the insulin sensitivity factor are not really that important, which I think is a good thing. It's less things to kind of toggle because it's learning what you need in terms of your basal, your sensitivity factor. The carb ratio is still something that you are, you have to change based on your, your carb ratio. Yeah, you know what? A lot of people might get confused in that. They say, oh my God, the ISF and insulin to carb don't have any relevance when it's in auto mode, smart guard. But the system learns and gives you your own basal rate mm -hmm. and insulin sensitivity factor based on your insulin usage. Mm -hmm. So it's a very smart, and that's where the word fully automated comes in. All right, so pro tip number two, or pro number two. Um, so there, you get these auto boluses every five minutes when, that, when they're needed, um, which is nice. You know, if your blood sugar is high, every five minutes it can give you a correction bolus, you know, an appropriately aggressive bolus to get your blood sugar down into target, um, which I think kind of big picture, what we're getting at is that when we were on it, we felt like our control was really good. And actually having to do less kind of like fine tuning and with these corrections, they can really help keep you in range. Now, the other thing is, is this duration of insulin action. Um, it's a setting and you could put it as low as two hours. And what does that mean? How you could lower yeah, so the just, duration of action? It, it's what the pump uses to calculate how much insulin is acting. And if you have it, you know, that your insulin action is five hours, well, it's going to say that the insulin that you injected five hours ago is still working. But in most cases, that's not true. So a lot of people will lower it down to two to be, you know, again, a little bit more aggressive in terms of how much insulin it thinks is acting. And it's basically saying that after two hours, all that insulin is gone. So it can give you, you know, more boluses. And I learned quite a bit getting set up on this pump because I never knew you could adjust the duration of insulin. It's a action. super, super important and toggle it, it, that people don't really know yeah, about. Exactly. Yeah. So we actually, you know, this was a real life experience and we asked Steve to show us some kind of his day in the life stuff on the system. And this first clip here really speaks to kind of, I think your experience with the control that you had, uh, even when you challenged it a little bit. Yep. Roll the clip. Hello everybody. Another beautiful morning in San Diego. I want to give you an update on how I'm doing on the 780G. And I should say that yesterday I went on a 35 mile bike ride uh, and I, one thing that was amazing was my blood sugar now is 112. Got up a little while ago, haven't eaten anything yet. And I did go to an Italian place with my girlfriend last night and ate a little bit of bread, only three refills. And then I ordered this great mushroom ravioli with thick sauce. And what I want you to look at is these, um, the basal rate is working like crazy, but that those light blue lines, those are auto boluses. And even though I kind of hovered near the top area of my goal, which is 180, it never went over 180 once. So you can see the auto boluses really did a good job with, I would say, my delayed absorption of carbohydrates because we ate a little bit late. And then you can see this period when I was on my bike ride that there was hardly any insulin at all. And so that is my last 24 hours. 
I love this auto bolus feature. It seems pretty aggressive and it works to keep my blood sugars down after eating. And check out my bunnies. So I love seeing all your bunnies, by the way. Now you have 10 now, right? Yes. <laughs> but you're just fostering them. So yeah. hopefully you'll give some of these bunnies back to somebody else. Yeah. But uh, you also mentioned, so first of all, that's awesome. You were just like, you know, people type when they hear Italian food, they're, you know, they want to, get, you get nervous because that's kind of the ultimate challenge. You did a really good job of staying in range. We didn't talk about exercise at all, but here's a picture of Steve on his, on his bike. If you don't believe that he actually does that, you cycle quite a bit. Yeah. So also being able to use that, that temporary target to keep you in range. I mean, what a day from exercising and then you earned your pasta food yeah. later and you got to play with bunnies. So that's a pretty positive you, day. You know, bike shirts have those pockets in the back and I just took my 780G and just clipped it on the back. So at first I was worried it was going to get in the way, but it did not. All right. Pro number three, Steve, it says aggressive but safe correction boluses. What do you make about that? Yeah. Well, the one thing I want to say about that is that it starts when the blood sugar starts to get above 120. Mm -hmm. And that's early. I mean, normally I, I wouldn't even worry about correcting myself at 120 with a diagonal up because I don't, I can't see into the future as the 780G is set up to do. So I thought that was a very unique setting that set up uh, the fact that it kept, it keeps you in range. So pro number four, so predicts glucose values two to four hours ahead of time. So that's just another way that we're saying it's constantly looking into the future, can be very vigilant about when you might need uh, more correction doses, et cetera, um, which leads, you know, maybe actually to pro number five, actually, which says meal detection and correction technology. That's it, something interesting. So interesting. What is it? Well, this system will detect consistent and rapid rises in your glucose. And it has this meal detection aggressive uh, system trying to make up for the fact that your blood sugar is rising and it didn't detect that you gave yourself a mm -hmm. bolus. So not only is the basal rate cranking away, it gives correction boluses over that. Mm -hmm. And always trying to prevent your blood sugar from getting to the, your 180 point. And that's what happened when I had that carbohydrate meal after exercising. It was cranking away. And I just want to say that a lot of people... We tell people to take insulin 20 minutes before eating. Sometimes people forget. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't count the carbs correctly. Uh, and sometimes they just overeat. And this is a great system that helps make up for those situations. So pro uh, number six, so you're hearing all this, well, it's every five minutes. And if I, if it detects I'm going up, it's giving me more insulin. You might be getting worried, was it going to make me go low? So it actually has technology too that can, can protect against that, that if, Let's say you ate 30 minutes ago, your blood sugar starts going up, it starts giving you insulin, but then you enter your carbs, it actually can take that into account and back off how much insulin to give you for that meal because it can kind of detect that you entered carbs late, essentially. Exactly. Yeah. It's very smart. And it once again, you said it earlier, it detects blood sugar way into the future and it constantly adjusts the amount of insulin it's giving you to correct for a missed bolus. Mm -hmm. So pro number seven, this was actually my biggest pro, um, and it's a little bit of an unsung hero of the system, is that you can get the infusion set that lasts seven days. And for me, that's been one of the biggest barriers for pump therapy in general, is that on the first day I put an infusion set in, it doesn't seem to be getting the absorption that it needs to be. My blood sugars are a lot higher. So having to do that every seven days instead of three is just huge. And I have just found anecdotally that I feel like my absorption is more consistent and, you know, who likes changing their infusion sets to begin with. So a longer infusion set, I think, is actually a huge advantage of this system. Yeah. People don't realize that most infusion systems, you're only supposed to wear them for three days. Yeah. So this is why I decided to stay with the system is that my control has just been really, really good again with kind of with less work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, with everything, we got to talk about some of the cons. So, Steve, what's your first con? Well, it's not really a con, to be honest. You know, I'm not a tubing guy. Um, and it's a personal choice. You've, you've worn pumps with tubing more than I have. My first pump way back when, I, when they came out was a Medtronic 502. So, I, I don't like tubing. Uh, and that's, that's my con, but it's not really a con. Okay. 
And, you know, for me, yeah, I don't mind tubing. So I've been used to, you know, pumps with tubing. But for people that, th there's people that come in to see you say, absolutely not, under no circumstances. And then, you know, you might talk about a different system. But it's just something for people to be aware of. And, and everyone gets used to it anyway, yeah. like I did. And then the second con is really, it's the, it's the CGM. So I found the CGM, and I know you did too, to be very, very accurate. Um, however, it's physically kind of difficult to put on. You need a separate transmitter um, that you have to click in. You have to actually charge the transmitter. The whole system lasts, you know, seven days. So it's not as user-friendly as some of the other systems that are on the market. Um, however, I think it speaks to the system that despite all these limitations with the, the practicality of the CGM, you know, I decided to stay with it. So I think that's an important message. If, if you are a patient that is wearing uh, a Dexcom, a Libre, or whatever, and it seems like a big barrier to jump to a different CGM, it's definitely easy to learn. And I think it is, it is, it shouldn't be a full stop. I'm not going to try that because of a different CGM. Same thing for providers. What would you tell a, an endo or a primary care doctor that says, I've never really used a Medtronic sensor. How do I get comfortable prescribing it? Yeah, I'd say as for providers, you know, patients will get used to putting it on. Mm -hmm. It's They teach it, it's, it becomes a habit. In fact, it lasts seven days, as long as the seven day tubing, you do it all together. Anyway. And I think the thing I would tell providers is, uh, is it keeps your patients in range in a safe manner. Mm -hmm. And we really, it's up to us as providers to learn about all the different pros and, and cons of these different systems and let the patient decide. So anyway, last thing to say about that. So I just learned right before we started filming this that you actually had one final pro, kind of an unusual positive that came out of this. And what was that? Well, my control is so good. I felt like I could, I felt I was stronger. I could lift more weight. So that's kind of odd. You felt stronger. So do you have any proof of it? Yeah, take a look. All right. Steve, I'm super impressed. That's like 225 pounds or something. That's wild. Yeah. You know what? I even brought one of my 45 pound plates. Check it out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Steve, these are fake? Yeah. So did you sneak fake weights into the gym? Yeah, went to the YMCA, <laughs> put them in a big bag. When no one was around, I put them on the bar. The bar was a real bar, 45 Oh, pounds. good. 45 pounds plus maybe... Plus three ounces. Six ounces, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that you did that, Steve. I was going to say that my biggest con was that I didn't get strong. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed... You're already, you're already strong. Thank you, buddy. I hope you guys enjoyed our take on the, on the Medtronic system, all the pros and cons. And make sure to check us out for, for more videos. Yep. Take care.